Hello and welcome everybody to the fundamentals of electrical power systems for biorefineries. Today I will give you a short insight and overview about the basic technologies for electric power generation. So, electric power is generated through rotating machines, they are called generators, and we will start with the basic principles. So, at the top right we see the basic arrangement of a generator which, cons which consists of a coil or a loop that is called a coil if there are several windings and a magnetic field that goes first on this picture from above to below then this uh, rotating field rotates around and the field after half a so-called period comes from the bottom up to the top. So that means as we can see here on the right side that the induction of the coil will go from plus through zero to minus and that is repeated over and over again. According to the law of induction, which means that the induced voltage in a loop is proportional to the rate of change of the magnetic flux, this generates an AC voltage. So this is a basic arrangement that can be found as well in the medium arrangement where we rotate the coil and have standing poles. And also, and that is the last one, it's at the top, at the bottom, we have the typical arrangement of electrical machines, how they are used nowadays. So, they consist again of a stationary winding, they call it coil or winding, and a rotating magnetic field. So let me see, at the beginning, this flux leaves the North Pole, goes around, so that is to say something like behind the windings, to the South Pole and enters here again. So we have the picture that in this stationary loop we have a fixed induction which is changing now because the rotator, the, the, the coil in this machine is rotating. So again we have a flux that is from plus to zero to minus and so on and so on and this generates a sinusoidal voltage. In reality, to use, make better use of these electrical machines instead of one coil, that is the one we have watched before, we have three coils and they are arranged in a, with a phase disposition of 120 degrees. So 120 degrees, so that means when now this magnetic field goes around here, first it enters through the coil number one, then it fully enters into number two, then into three and then it restarts again at number one. So that means we have a rotating magnetic field and for those coils it means that the induction is more or less the same but there is a timely shift from one coil to the other and that is exactly by the phase difference of one third of a period. In technical purposes by the way we have a frequency power frequency of 50 hertz that means each period is 1 divided by 50 and that means that we have uh, 20 milliseconds per cycle. So how do, is this field regulated? The field is, I go back just once, you see this here, this is an electromagnetic field that is produced by having a DC current, direct current, going around and around and around this piece of iron, of core iron, and this induces the electric field, the magnetic field, sorry, the magnetic field. So we see here this is the induction coil, and according to the current that is flowing through this coil, we have more or less flux, and that means more or less output voltage. That can be seen here. In this picture, we see in the x-axis the current through the inductance coil, which is a DC current, and this is the output that is to be measured at the terminals of the generator. So the output is more or less proportional to that current, so if the current raises it, it goes up. But because of the material properties of the iron, there is something like a saturation, so the, the inductance does not increase anymore, but it is more or less coming stable, and that means that the output voltage does not increase at the same rate as the exciter current does. On contrast, this red line shows how about the short circuit current. The short circuit current is strictly proportional to the exciter current. 
just a view into technology. In the technology, we see how is the DC current, this exciter current produced. We go back, it comes through slip rings because it's a rotating uh, device and that must be provided with DC current. So this DC current goes through these so-called slip rings. It is produced by a rectifier bridge, which in turn is controlled by this control unit for the excitation. And that measures the phase-to-phase -phase voltage of the output voltage of this generator. So that means if the output voltage of the generator is below its nominal value, this will be detected by the control unit, which in turn increases by changing this firing angle of these thyristors, which increases the DC current and in turn raises the output voltage. So that means this is a controlled, uh, controlled loop which stabilizes the voltage. Let us see, this is a, for a hydro plant, which is the most simple to understand the principle of the conversation of energy. So in a hydro plant, we have a reservoir high up in a mountain or somewhere else in a mountain. Then you have a pipe that leads the water to the turbine. The turbine lets the water out into the lower basin and while it turns, it rotates also the generator which produces the electrical energy. So we have the static energy of the water up here in the reservoir, which goes down through this turbine. In the turbine, it, the, the static energy of the water is turned into mechanical energy, and the mechanical energy in turn is converted into electrical energy in the generator. We are also familiar with the concept of the Sankai diagram, which you can see here on the right side which means that the whole raw energy of the water, that is the static energy which is in the upper basin, is converted through the hydraulic system with certain losses into the turbine. From there it is converted in the generator with a high efficiency of 97% into electrical energy. And then it is put through the so-called station transformer into the electric grid. So the overall efficiency from the source to the sink is roughly 73%. Now when it comes to bioenergy conversion, this is mostly done in a thermoelectric process. So that means the biomass is converted into, is burned, and while it's burnt, it produces heat. The heat is converted into steam, and the steam is converted into electrical energy. But basically, it's the same principle. Let's start from the generator. The generator gets its power from the turbine. The turbine gets its power through this uh, steam duct from the heater, the boiler. The boiler is the equivalent of the upper basing in the hydraulic power station. Well. And in order to fill the water in, we need some other um, equipment. So what is needed as equipment? Let's start the circulation of the water here at this feed water tank. The water is taken out of this feed water tank, is put through the so-called feed water pump, where the pressure is raised so that the water now can circulate on a high pressure, first through this preheater, which gets some additional heat from the turbine, and then goes into the real boiler. This is where the flames are blowing and where the heat is turned, the energy is turned from chemical energy into thermal energy. So after that, after the steam has left this boiler, it is put through the so-called superheater where the last droplets of water are really evaporated. So there is pure steam going into the turbine. It goes to the turbine loses all its pressure, its thermal energy, and comes out here at the outlet of the turbine where it is virtually at low temperatures and at low pressure. And then this steam that is still steam that is coming out here, this steam is converted into water in the condenser. So the condenser operates in such a way that cool water is put in here, and the warm water, which has been heated by the residual heat of the steam, is let out. And then we have the last element here is the so-called condensate pump. And then the circle starts again. So this is the thermal, thermal circle of a steam generation. 
sometimes a thermal process can be realized in such a way that we have a gas turbine. The gas turbine is working in a similar way. First, we have a compression of the fresh air supply, which is something like the feed water pump in the steam circle. So we have compressed air, then some fuel is added, it is ignited, and while it's ignited, it blows out to the right side of this combustion chamber into the gas turbine, and there the exhaust air with the exhaust fumes goes into the open air. And while it, the air in this hot gas is expanding, it turns the generator, which in turn again produces electrical energy. The last way how to transform chemical energy, for example, from, a, from biogas or biomass into electrical energy, is done in the so-called combined heat and power plant, CHP. What happens here? So, for example, the combustion of the gases takes place in the motor, which is a more or less ordinary gas motor, which in turn turns the generator. And when we speak about the combined heat and power plant, we combine also heat output because the exhaust fumes, when they leave the motor, are not let into the outside, into the open air, but they are put through a heat recovery boiler. So that means you can think of it something like a hollow vessel. In the vessel you have tubes round, around, around, and the hot air goes around these tubes, and in the tubes you have water, which is used later for heating, for example, or other warm water processes. And it is not only the hot exhaust fumes that are used, but it is also the oil which is heated in such a motor. This is used in a heat exchanger where the water, when it comes from the customer or from enters the circle, is first warmed in a first step by using the heat of the oil, and the energy of the oil. Then it takes more energy in this heat recovery boiler and then it goes back into this heating cycle, for example, to heat homes or houses or something like this. The last point, when it comes to power plants, which are operated through, for example, biogas and biomass, it is essential that you supply the auxiliary services directly at the route where the energy is generated. So that means, as we can see here, we have the generator, and the generator, before it releases the energy into the grid, is used also to produce some electricity, some electrical power for the so-called unit supply. The unit supply that is lube oil pumps, ventilations, uh, ventilators, it is protection and control devices, emergency lighting, etc. So these units are needed just to sustain the operation and they are also used and needed if you want to have islanded operation, which is basically possible. So these Unit supply is fed from the generator through the unit transformer, and that is essential to keep the unit running. So, this was the chapter Basic Technologies for Electrical Power Generations. I thank you very much, and for further details and deepening, please have a look into the script.